uh, we're still awaiting some some more members of our team there in route and they should be arriving tonight for the full team to be here before I go any further on behalf of the NTSB I would like to extend our concerns to the family and friends who were who were affected by this accident and I would also like to thank the emergency responders who have been working so hard in response to this accident the NTSB is an independent federal agency. We're charged by Congress to investigate transportation accidents, determine the probable cause, and make recommendations to prevent the reoccurrence. We, uh, like, I, like I said before, we're just arriving on scene. We're, we're just starting to get our, our investigation started. So, uh, so here's some, just some preliminary information that we have to date right now. At 12.15 a.m. this morning, SEPTA train 155 struck an unoccupied train rail car 148 while entering the 69th street transportation center preliminary preliminary reports from local authorities indicate there were 32 passenger injuries and one train operator injury also onboard video recorders from from the two rail cars involved have been downloaded and they will be sent to our vehicle recorder lab in dc for further analysis the NTSB has brought an eight-member GO team. Each team member is an expert in different fields, and they will be collecting evidence in their specific disciplines, which include mechanical, operation, signal and train control, crash worthiness, emergency response, and human performance. Throughout the next few days, NTSB investigators will work on scene to gather the details of this accident. Our mission well, during this accident investigation is to, not, is to understand not just what happened, but why. Why it happened and to recommend changes to prevent it from occurring again. We will not be determining the cause of this accident while we are here on scene. Right now we are just beginning the investigation so we don't, do not have a great deal of information. We will keep you updated as we learn more. On scene with us is our media relations officer, Eric Weiss. Uh, members of the media can reach Eric at 202-314-6100. I can take a few questions now. Yes, sir. Um, so when you guys aren't going to do it now uh, while you're on scene, when can we get an idea of when there might be uh, uh, results from your investigation? We're going to be here on scene for four or five days, collecting our evidence. And, and once we, once we finish here, we're, we're, we continue the investigation back back at our home headquarters in Washington D.C. Uh, all the documents that we collect, all the all the evidence that we we collect, we're, we're going to open up a docket eventually, and that that'll become uh, available to the public. In the docket will also be our factual reports from our each discipline. And then uh, eventually, when we finish the investigation, nine to 12 months from now, the final report will become available to the public. Can you walk us through some of the things, like specifically how you would look into something like this, what you would investigate, checking this thing, just kind of what the, what the uh, list of things would be in, in something like this? Okay, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's very extensive, uh, and, and they're not all the same. Our, our mechanical person is going to do a complete mechanical inspection of the train. They're going to check the, the equipment, the operation of it, the, the maintenance history on it, and, and uh, do a complete, complete uh, a run through of the whole systems, the propulsion, the, the braking, and everything else. Our signal train control system uh, expert will be uh, looking into the signals. Uh, were they working properly? Have they been maintained properly? What were they indicating to the trains at, at the time of the accident? And he'll also be looking at the communications between the control center and the field. And um, our, our survival factors or crashworthiness, he'll be looking at uh, the cars themselves, what caused the injuries, some of the injuries to, to the occupants. He'll be, he'll be looking at the design of the car, the, the crashworthiness, uh, how, how they survived, how they, how they performed during the crash, and if there's any improvements to be, to be identified. And then we'll also have our, our, our operations. They're going to be doing interviews of the train crew, the disp train dispatcher, and, and any other, other pertinent person that we, we identify as having information that could help our investigation. Could you describe uh, the damage to the two cars? There doesn't appear to be a lot of damage uh, to the uh, back of the car that was there. 
the front of the car that was coming in, and then I have a follow-up. Uh, okay, uh, we, we did a preliminary inspection uh, or examination of the two vehicles. There, there is some damage uh, inside. There's some buckling of the floor. But where, where the cars are, are situated right now doesn't allow for a complete inspection to get underneath the cars. So, so we did a preliminary examination, and, and there is some damage. Once we get the, the cars moved to a shop where we can look underneath them, we'll, we'll do a thorough examination and uh, document any other damage that we can identify. I know you can't speculate, but it appears um, not only here but in New York, several uh, train accidents in the last couple of years all appear to be caused by speed. Um, what would you say to train engineers out there who may be listening um, about your concerns about speed on the rails, which appear to be um, the cause of many of these crashes? Well, we're, we're, we're focusing right now on, on this investigation. We're, right now we're, we're, we're collecting all the evidence we can, make sure we don't lose any perishable evidence right now. Uh, speed would be speculating. I, I can't say if that, if that caused the fa was a factor right now or not. But once we get back to our DC uh, DC headquarters, we do uh, we do do a, a full system system comparison with others to see if, I, if we can identify trends. And and like I said, right now we, we, we I, w I wouldn't say speed was was a, was a factor. I can't I can't speculate that right now. Based on what you've seen, oh. this car that was struck is that was that out of place? Should it have been there? Uh, we're, right now, we're still collecting records. Uh, it was stationed there. It was parked there. There was no occupants and, and no train operator. But it is not, it's not unusual to, for, for SEPTA to have trains ready to go for, for, or, or to recover at, at different places along the rail. So, so normal. It's normal to have that sort of right now, we, we haven't identified an issue with it, but we're going to be looking into what the practices are as, as far as leaving unoccupied trains. So it's too early to tell if that played a part in it right now. How familiar are you with uh, We have a question back here, and I'll, I'll get back to you. Yes. Was, was automatic train control functioning? Did it prevent any kind of extra damage? Was there any indication of how that functioned at this point? The Norris Town Line does have signals, and, and right, right now our signal, signal investigator just arrived, and he's going to be looking into that. He's going to be looking into the complete functioning of, of the signal system, the whole ATP, the protection it provides, and whether it was functioning properly, whether it was being maintained properly, and, and any other issue that he can find. Yes? We all interviewed the operator. The operator was, was released from the hospital this morning, and, and our, our operations and human performance investigators arrived around noon. Uh, they have they scheduled they have scheduled they have we have requested the train operator to to come to us tomorrow along with uh, the operator of the train on the adjacent track and along uh, some some other supervisors